Hey guys, it's John. So, Dead by Daylight, a game that I've been playing quite a lot of over the past year and a half, just got a new DLC for Resident Evil. And what this means is that Nemesis is now in the game as a killer, as well as Leon and Jill are now in the game as survivors. And there's even skins where you can play as Claire or Chris Redfield. There's also a map for the Raccoon City Police Department, so right now, uh, there's a lot of Resident Evil going on in Dead by Daylight, and there's actually more people playing the game now than ever. It just hit its all-time concurrent player peak on launch day of this DLC, and I thought it was a better time than ever. You know, maybe if you're a Resident Evil fan that's thinking about checking the game out, or... Maybe you're not even a Resident Evil fan, but you just thought this might be a good time to jump in. Uh, I have put together a video where I played the Dead by Daylight tutorial and I basically talk about how to play. I even play a couple of the new bot matches and talk about uh, different things about the game, things that it doesn't tell you in the tutorial, and go into detail about uh, most major things, you know, broad strokes about the game. So if you have ever watched Dead by Daylight and you're like, I have no idea what's going on, uh, I hope that this video will be helpful. For you, I also plan on uh, uploading more Dead by Daylight videos, uh, so I'll probably link to this video quite often for people that are watching that don't know how to play. Uh, it's a very simple game, but it's surprisingly deep. Uh, there's quite a lot to it, more than it seems, you know, just on a surface level. So anyway, but I, I'm, I'm rambling now. Hopefully uh, this video will be helpful, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. So, so it's for anyone out there, out of you guys that doesn't know how to play DBD, and you're like, because I get them every stream, I get them every stream. You come in, maybe you don't know that I stream this game from like the YouTube channel, and you're just like, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what I'm watching. I have no idea how this game works. This is for you. Dead by Daylight is an asymmetric game that is played in trials between up to four survivors and one murderous killer. As a survivor, your main objective is to escape the trial and live another day. And here's David King. Look at him, he's got, he's, he's ready to survive. Here I'm playing Dwight, you can see in the upper right. Repair the generator. So, um, this would be a horrible map if it was real. <laughs> but it's not. So, um, yeah, this actually somebody's been working on this gen. I don't know who, but somebody has been. Um, seeing the up and, and the lower left right there, there's my portrait. And you can see there's two marks. You can faintly see two marks. And those are, that's my hook counter. So that tells you how many times I've been hooked in the match. This time it's zero. And then just below it, it says one. And then there's a generator symbol. So that means that there's one generator left to be completed. Okay. Escaping the trial. Notice the objective information at the lower left of the screen. With the final generator complete, the switch is powered and the exit gate can be opened. In most matches, there will be a total of five generators to complete. When I say most matches, they mean they mean every match. Um, but what it doesn't say is that there are five generators to complete, but there are seven total on the map. Which is something that a lot of people don't understand at first. They think that there's just like five total. But the killer can't camp the last gen. So there's seven total generators. Okay, so skill checks. Certain actions may occasionally produce a skill check. Escaping a trial alive will require a, co a combination of teamwork and competence. Mmm, debatable. Failing to time skill checks consistently may make survival more challenging. So... You may notice that when I was repairing the generator, there weren't any skill checks. So these are just quick time events. You see them all the time. I'll show you what happens. So if you miss one, the generator explodes. If you just completely miss one, it, it explodes, right? Failing a skill check may stall the progress in your current action and notify the killer of your whereabouts. Listen out for the audio prompts the skill check is about to trigger. So here's another thing that new players often don't know is that when you when you uh fail a skill check like that the killer gets a big ol they get a big ol like explosion on their screen big ol circular explosion and a sound effect so they not only hear it but they also see it so that's what's called a good skill check right there 
Because you may notice that, like, the zone, there's, like, one white part, and then there's one big, like, black bar. If you hit the black bar, or the blank bar, rather, um, that's a good skill check. And if you hit the white part, that's a great skill check. I'm gonna try to do it, but I can't do it every time. There we go. So that's a great skill check. And when you hit a great skill check, it gives you more progress on the generator than if you just hit a good skill check. Okay. Oh no, the killer. Your survival in the trial may be hindered, <laughs> that's an understatement, by a murderous killer whose only goal is to sacrifice as many survivors as possible. Use every resource available to avoid being in the presence of the killer. Listen out for the terror radius or heartbeat. It may help you recognize when the killer is nearby. All right, so I think he's nearby. <laughs> this is the terror radius right here. Anytime you hear me talk about the terror radius, it's this. See, and as we move away, it's slowly, slowly reducing. Slowly reducing until it's gone. We've escaped the killer's terror radius. Stealth is usually the best way to keep from alerting the killer to your presence. Crouch down and move quietly to stay hidden from the killer. I will say a lot of new survivors take this way too literally. And like, let's say the objectives in the killer shack, they'll go about it like this. Thanks. You do not, you do not need to do that. Scratch marks and wildlife. Running through the environment will create scratch marks and may alarm wildlife, alerting the killer to your location. So, this is actually really important. If you're just starting the game. When you run, you can't see them, but you'll leave bright orange, like, unmissable scratch marks. So anytime you run around the match, you can't see them, unless you're running a perk called Fixated, but the killer can see them. If you, if you walk, you don't need to crouch. If you, if you just walk, you don't leave scratch marks. Also, um, see the, the crows, these crows right here. So most people don't pay attention to crows, honestly. Um, but see how they just ran off. You can uh, alert wildlife. And, uh, there is a perk called spies from the shadows that killers can use that will like give them a visual notification of when crows are disturbed. There's also a perk that you can run called calm spirit, which means you never, um, you never alert crows okay see this crow right here see how I, I sprinted for a second and it, and it flew off so um now this right here this is also very important if you're new to the game this is a vault any window or any ledge like this is a vault and there's three different kinds of vaults okay this is called a slow vault a slow vault is obviously very slow, but um, it's totally noiseless, uh, except for the little oh when you go over it. Or, <laughs> okay, so that's a slow vault. Now, this is a fast vault, and it happens when you're sprinting and you're, you're running head on into the vault. This. Okay, it's called a rushed action as well. They create loud noises and may signal your location to the killer. Try interacting with vaults and lockers at a slower speed to reduce the amount of noises you can make. Okay, but you get it. This is a fast vault. It's called a fast vault because it's the quickest way to vault over something. Head on. But it also makes a really loud noise, so when you do that, it's like you miss a skill check on the generator. So, when you do this, not only, um... Is it fucking loud, like, for anyone around you? But even if the killer's across the map, they will get a big, like, explosion visual indicator on their screen, and they'll get, they'll hear, like, a... So they'll know that you did it across the entire map. A lot of new survivors don't know this, and they just, like, fast vault everything, even when they're trying to be stealthy. So don't do that. Okay, let's see if I can show you. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you a medium vault. That's a medium vault, okay? It's not quite as fast as a fast vault, because a fast vault is head-on. A medium vault, however, is like if you try to do a vault, but you don't come at it head-on. So like this. You may notice it's a little slower than a fast vault. And when you medium vault something, it's usually a uh, recipe for death. So 
that all is very important. Of course, that's not really going to be told in the in the tutorial. Um, not that you would expect them to do it. So this is uh, this is kind of a boarded up killer shack. The stairs lead to the basement. Maybe possible to find tools that are crucial for survival down here. Uh, I, this is another thing that I think a lot of new survivors take way too literally. You can get rarer items in the basement. However, you normally don't want to be in the basement. Unfortunately, the basement is also a highly dangerous place for a survivor to be caught. The reason for that is because there's one exit and one entrance, and it's this stairwell. So if a killer, if you hear this, and you're in the basement, you're probably going to be hit on the way out at least one time. And if they're a killer with an insta-down ability, you may go down in one hit and be hooked on one of these, which you don't want. Anyway, find a place to hide. So you can hide in lockers. Now, I did a slow... I did a very slow hide in the locker just then. And the killer can grab you out of it if they find you in it. You can also wiggle while you're being carried. Um, if, you f if you fill the wiggle meter, then the killer will drop you. However, that it, it tends not to happen. So don't, like, try to do it too much. If you are hooked by the killer, your options are limited. You can risk escaping the hook yourself. However, each failed attempt will reduce your health and speed up the sacrificial process. So when they say reduce your health, they mean like the hook meter, okay? You don't wanna take a chance to escape. See this? You don't wanna do that. What they don't tell you here is that it's a 4% chance. It's not like it's a one in three or anything. It is literally a one in 25 chance when you take a chance to escape that you will succeed. So this, that's a 1 out of 25 chance, and look how much of the meter it took off. It takes off so much. So your best bet when you're on the hook is to just stay there, and it'll go down naturally. And you can wait for a teammate to rescue you like this. Now when you get unhooked, injured, you're injured. Good, it tells you that. In an injured state, survivors make more noise and leave patches of blood that the killer can follow to uncover your location. While injured, you are much more vulnerable to the killer's attacks. One more hit will put you into the dying state. Okay, so when you hear about the dying state, that's when you're on the ground. So right now, some, see, look at this, look at this. A lot of new survivors don't know about this either. See these patches of blood? So a lot of survivors, even really experienced ones, if they just, if they don't know about, they don't know about it. They'll be injured. And they'll like, oh, I, okay. Let's say there's a locker right here. They'll hide in the locker, right? And then the killer will come up and they'll see the pool of blood, pool of like bright red shiny blood outside the locker and they'll get them out of the locker. And then the survivor will be like, how did they know I was there? They were cheating. No, they saw your blood. They also may have seen your scratch marks. Like I said uh, earlier, I entered that locker like slow, but if you are sprinting when you go into the locker, it'll make a loud noise notification, and it's just like if you did a fast vault or if you failed a skill check. It, get, it alerts the killer to exactly where you are. They get a visual notification. They hear the loud noise. So don't, don't rush into a locker. Okay, so I'm gonna heal myself up with the med kit. With the med kit, you can heal yourself or others. I usually, most players keep med kits to heal themselves. You leave both blood and scratch marks when you're injured. That is correct. Unless you have a perk like Lucky Break or something. But just by default, yeah. Okay, so we healed ourselves up to healthy. One thing you may notice, too. See in the lower left, it's got the tick mark right there. It was previously blank, so that means I've been hooked one time. You can be hooked a total of three times. Maximum. So I'm on I'm uh, on second hook, is what is what we would say. Um... I've been, or I've been hooked once, either one, whatever you want to say. Uh, I've been hooked one time, so I can be hooked. I, I have one hook to give, if you will, for the team. So, like, if there's another player that has been hooked twice, then, and we're in, like, the end game, we're trying to get the gens done, then as someone who was hooked one time, it would be sort of my responsibility to try to uh, take it down for them if the situation should arise. But that's kind of more macro game stuff. Another survivor has been caught and hooked. Rescue the survivor while the killer is away. Okay. So, rescue the hooked survivor. All right. So, now, this is the tutorial. Oh, here's the hatch. We'll get to that later. Here's the... <laughs> the killer's not around. Here's the survivor. 
Meg here has been hooked. Now, there's a lot of different techniques to unhook survivors. Generally, you don't want to hook unhook while the killer's around unless it's a very desperate situation. So, you kind of... A lot of times, uh, I, I would recommend not hanging around the hook while someone's being hooked. But, like, working on a generator. And then, like... If the situation arises, you don't hear the terror radius. You know, they're, uh, they've been on the hook for like a, maybe a minute because you don't want to unhook them too quickly. So the killer is definitely far away or like you see that someone else is in a chase with them. Then you go for the unhook. And if the killer's around, one thing that you can do um, when you unhook is uh, you can fake the unhook. The reason you want to do that is because killers can grab survivors. So like if you're in the middle of unhooking, and I didn't finish unhooking, the killer could come right up to me, grab me off of the hook, and put him right on his back. It's like an instant down. So one thing that you, may, that you might see survivors do is they'll fake the unhook. They'll, they'll start it, and then the killer will go for the grab, and then they'll let go, and the killer will M1 them, and then that's when they go for the full unhook. While the killer is like recovering from their initial hit. Though the survivor is no longer in immediate danger, they are injured and require attention. Survivors may heal each other without the use of special items. However, first aid kits can help speed up the process. I would not recommend using first aid kits to heal someone right off hook, personally. But, it is something you can do. Now here's something that a lot of new survivors are really bad at, and that's healing under hook. That's what this is called. I think it's almost... It's almost always a good idea to heal under hook. Unless you hear the terror radius right now. It's a good idea to just heal right there. You get it over with. It's done. If you have a perk called we'll make it, you can heal them very, very quickly, for example. Uh, it's just a good idea. Too many survivors, they'll unhook and then they'll be like, oh, let's go somewhere where it's safe. Let's go over here. Hide behind this rock. But then like... You're leaving, first of all, you're leaving a trail, you're leaving a trail like exactly to where you are. So if he's coming back to the hook, he's gonna find you anyway, before you're done with the heal. Uh, I think it's just better to save time and do that. Not in every situation, like I said, but most of the time. Teamwork, as a survivor, teamwork is crucial to your success in a trial. Working with others helps speed up generator repairs and healing wounded teammates. So you'll see here, he, uh, repairing the generator with Meg is actually gonna go faster than me doing it by myself. But it's not going to be exactly like double speed. They, uh... Because that would be... That would be unfair. There are also perks that you can use, like Prove Thyself, which can increase how quickly you do a generator with other people. You can use a toolbox to repair faster. Um, this is just base speed right now. Okay, so we repaired the final generator. Now the exit gates are powered. Escaping the trial. Notice the objective information at the lower left of the screen with the little guy going out the portal. With the final generator complete, the switch is powered and the exit gates can be opened. In most matches, there will be a total of five generators. Okay. When they say when they say that, that's every match. Every match has five generators to complete, seven total. Unless you're in a custom game. Additionally, a hatch has appeared somewhere in the environment. The hatch will only open by itself when only one survivor remains in the trial. So here's some important information about the hatch that not everyone knows. Not everyone understands how the hatch works. It's kind of complicated. Because this is this is a good summary of when you'll probably use the hatch. The hatch will only open by itself when only one survivor remains in the trial. So, like, if Meg dies here, I'm the only one left, the hatch will open by itself. However, the hatch will not even appear closed at all until you complete... A certain number of generators and that depends on how many people are left in the match it's kind of annoying don't don't worry if you don't remember this it's it's kind of random um, for example it, it's the number of generators completed like equal to the number of survivors remaining plus one makes the hatch appear on the map so for example let's say you have three people alive in a match um, the hatch will appear on the map somewhere in a random location closed when you complete four generators. So you have, when you have one left. So number of survivors remaining plus one equals how many generators you need to complete. So it's just a little thing. It's kind of an advanced, advanced, uh, 
thing to keep in mind. But um, the important thing to know is that when there's one survivor left, uh, then you can look for the hatch. So this is actually a good situation to be in with if you have all the generators complete and you're the last survivor remaining, then you have to separate the killer's attention between looking for the hatch and threatening the exit gate. So you can choose to threaten the exit gate if you want, or you can go look for the hatch. And there's two exit gates. Okay, well, um, well, this is kind of confusing because Meg's still here, but here's what the hatch looks and sounds like when it's open. Hear this? And this is what it looks like. It's like, you want to look for that black smoke because sometimes it's really, you know, if it weren't for that black smoke, you may not see it like around here, but you want to, you want to really listen for that sound. It can be really soft. And then just like slowly move toward it. If you've got headphones, that really helps obviously. And then when you get to it, you just click and you escape. All right, so killer tutorial is gonna be much more simple. It's gonna be like hit survivor, but we'll go through it anyway. Um, oh yeah, okay, so I see a question about 99ing the exit gate. So the reason that you would wanna 99 the exit gate, the reason that like, if someone's about to be hooked, one of your teammates or something, you wanna like, you wanna open the exit gate to 99%, but not completely open it. The reason you don't wanna do that is uh, for a number of reasons. One is the killer might have a perk that if the exit gates are open and they hook someone, it blocks the exit gate for a minute and that can be a really bad time. Um, so that's one reason you don't wanna do it. But another reason is that it gives you the most possible time to uh, get your teammate off the hook and get out. Uh, because when you open the exit gate, a countdown begins called the end game collapse. And uh, you'll see it, I think, in this killer tutorial. Uh, but the end game collapse basically puts a time limit on the game and the killer can use that to make it to where you don't get that person off the hook. So you don't want to start that if you don't have to, if you, if you if you have an option. All right, so killer. Dead by Daylight is an asymmetric game that you play in trials. You already read that. Okay, as the killer, your main objective is to attack down and hook as many survivors as possible. Killers may injure or down survivors with a well-timed blow from their primary weapon. Try not to miss, as it may give them the brief moment they need to escape from your grasp. Okay, so we're playing the trapper right here. <laughs> okay, so Meg here got caught in uh, one of our wonderful traps, as uh, Salazar would say. And um, yeah, you can just you can just hit her. And, and make her go down, uh, and I think we're gonna do that actually. Uh, as trappers specifically, you can also pick them up out of the trap so you don't have to hit them. But we'll just be hitting her here. And after you successfully hit someone, you you're, the killer has to clean their weapon. So that's why it's important not to like miss an attack. You don't have as long of a time to like in between your attacks if you. Uh, if you miss an attack, but it's still it's still something that survivors can use against you. Struggle state. When a survivor has been stuck on the hook for an extended period of time, the entity is summoned forth, forcing them to struggle for their life. Hooking a survivor twice will result them or will force them in to struggle state immediately or sacrifice them if they've already been in struggle state. This is a lot um, this is a lot of explaining hook states. So you remember earlier when I got hooked? in the basement as Dwight, and then there was that little tick mark. So that meant that I had been hooked one time. And on your very first hook, you can attempt to escape. You have a 4% chance, right? On your second hook, you hit what's called the struggle state. And you can also hit struggle state on your first hook if your little hook bar goes down to halfway and nobody unhooks you, you automatically go to phase two. And it's like you've been hooked twice. So that's why it's important to rescue people on hook before they hit halfway on their bar so they don't hit struggle state. And, uh, okay, well, once you hit struggle state, you have to do QTEs, you have to do skill checks to stay alive. And um, if nobody gets you, or if you fail those skill checks and it goes all the way to zero, that's when you're sacrificed. Alternatively, if you've been hooked twice, and you get downed and you get hooked a third time, you automatically die. That's it. 
Injured health state. Normally, survivors can withstand two successful strikes. The first one injuring them, and the second one downing them into the dying state. Again, that's like when you're on the ground, um, when you're slugged, as some might say. Once they are downed, they can be picked up and carried to a hook. But be careful, they will often try to wiggle out of your grasp. Okay, I guess we're not gonna... Okay, a lunge attack gives you a slightly longer reach to take down survivors from a short distance. Hold down the attack button to lunge. So I'll show you the difference between that. Um, so this is a normal attack. You just click. Did you hear that tap? That's what it looks like. Now, if you wanna lunge, you hold it down. And it takes a little bit longer. So when you lunge, you get a little extra distance. That's a lunge, right? As opposed to this, that's just a regular attack. So, okay, let's uh, let's try it out on Meg. She's gonna throw this pallet down. Immersed, immersed survivor. Oh, you, you sure got me. Okay. See these scratch marks? These are what it looks like. These are what it looks like when you run. This is what the killer sees. Bright orange, unmissable. You definitely were in this area. So that's why it's important as a new survivor uh, to know when to run and when not to run. So I'll show you just like a regular attack. We're gonna get right up on her. That's what it looks like. And after you hit them, they get a little speed boost. So after you injure them, they get a little speed boost so they can get a little further away from you. Killers have several means of tracking and locating survivors. Look out for the scratch marks that survivors leave when they run. Injured and dying survivors also produce noises of anguish and pain and leave a trail of blood that may lead you directly to their location. So. See, we see these survivors, or these survivors, these scratch marks over here. And we just saw her. We can also hear her. Okay, wait. I'm trying to, that's the, that's the chase music. I'm trying to like, See, you hear her? You hear her going like, <coughs> So that's also something to keep in mind when you're playing Survivor, is that when you're injured, that's what you sound like. And see how far away we are from her and we can hear her? We can hear her like pretty clearly. I mean, at least I can. Um, if you can't, you might have to turn your volume up. But uh, unless you have a perk called Iron Will that completely silences you when injured, which is a very, very good perk, um, this is what it sounds like. And also she's leaving pools of blood. So see these? They really stand out, right? Depending on the terrain. And uh, she's she's leaving them as she runs. So you can track, not only with scratch marks, it's like if they're just walking, you can track by the pools of blood. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a lunge attack. So like, see how far away she is, right? So the lunge gives you a little bit of extra, extra space. And now um, she's not recovering or anything. It's interesting that the tutorial doesn't go into like recovering from the dying state. So anyway, so once you've downed somebody, they're slugged like this. So if you ever hear about like the killer's slugging or something, they'll like leave someone like this and then they'll get into a chase with another survivor. And when they're like this, uh, another survivor has to come up and heal them out of it back into the injured state so they can run around again. Um, let's go ahead and just pick her up though. So now she's wiggling. She's actually not wiggling. Uh, when they wiggle, it moves around your killer like this. So sometimes if you're going to the hook, you like, like, might like bump into a tree or, and if they do it for long enough, they can wiggle out. But uh, we'll just hook them for now. The survivor's main objective is to complete repairs on generators, open an exit gate and escape. Hopefully you all know that by now. As a killer, you can slow survivor progress by kicking partially repaired generators. This action slowly but continuously regresses the progress that survivors have made in repairing the generator. Okay, so, for example, this is a healthy generator. It's been repaired, and right now, it's gaining no progress, but it's also losing no progress. So, you can just come up, kick it, and see when you see these sparks, that means that the generator is regressing. And that means that the progress is going down. So if the survivors don't come back to this generator and they don't start working on it, then it will go all the way down to zero. A good indicator of telling how far along a, uh, a generator is, 
is look at the pistons. It'll give you like a rough idea of the percentage that it's done. So see here, two out of the four pistons are going. That means it's about, it's about halfway done. Um, if all four of them are going, then that means it's very close to completion. So you can get a pretty good like visual indicator of how far along it is by how many of the pistons are going. Okay. Um, now, <laughs> see like this one, this one, three pistons, right? That was a grab. So if you get right behind a survivor, you can interrupt their action. Certain survivor actions, vaulting through windows, repairing generators, using the exit gate switch, and it doesn't say it, but also like going in or out of a locker may be interrupted by the killer, while other situations may allow the killer to pick them up directly from bear traps or out of lockers. So if they're inside a locker, you know, like earlier when I was playing Dwight and I was in the basement, uh, he just pulled me out of the locker. It's like a preset animation. That's different than a grab. That doesn't count as like a grab for like achievements or challenges or things like that. Um, but it's the same, it's the same effect. Tap the attack button while directly next to a survivor, performing an action to interrupt. Take advantage of these opportunities. So when you grab someone, you aut they automatically go right onto your back and you can just hook them. And that's the advantage of doing that. So let's go ahead and I'm being toxic in the tutorial. So this one, see, like, see these three pistons are going hard and then this one, this fourth one's going a little bit. We definitely want to kick something like this. Now this generator, not going at all. It looks like nobody's over here actually. So Claudette's on hook right now. Uh, Dwight is busy being completely AFK. Okay, so he just went into a locker. <laughs> so this, this is what it looks like when you grab them out of the locker. And you can just hook them, right? By the way, none of your matches as killer will be as easy as this. Exit gates. Notice the objective information at the lower left of the screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Stop the survivors before they can escape. Okay, so in this situation, miraculously, all five generators, even the ones that we kicked, are all... Even the one that, that had no progress on it, they're all done. So now see this little uh, yellow light normally there's gonna be two of these but uh, you're gonna see that's the exit gate so you see Meg's on it right now and as the as the bar is increasing the lights above the exit gate are turning on and that's why I talked about earlier you want to kind of like stop right before the esk in escape but yeah you can grab people off the exit gate just like that and uh, now we're gonna take her to a hook. It's important to note that C. Dwight um, is still on hook, even though Claudette is dead. So that means that while Dwight's on hook, the hatch not open because Meg isn't the last survivor alive. Every killer has their own individual powers to learn and master. Each killer has a different way to track and kill their prey. Try them all and experiment with different combinations of perks and add-ons. I have to say, the uh, the killer tutorial, I think a bit less in depth than the survivor one. Interesting. But uh, now we're gonna check out the bot matches, which I'm very interested in. Let's see, survive with bots, kill the bots. So let's do survive with bots first. I'm interested in this. We'll go over some of the things that we didn't cover in the tutorial. Um, I'm thinking that maybe this, whoever, the Trapper AI can't be that good. We're going to be playing against Trapper. Okay, so, one thing that, uh, the tutorial also didn't cover at all were hex perks, or totems at all. Interesting. So, I'll show you a totem if I can. Well. Okay, so here's a totem. There are five of these on the map, and they're mostly like evenly spread out when you see one of these you can cleanse them this is called a dull totem a dull totem does nothing unless there's a hex perk 
And there's really only like one hex perk that does anything with them. Otherwise, it's just a thousand points for you. Uh, but if you see one of these that's on fire, if you see one of those piles of bones that's on fire, that means that there is an active hex perk being used that's affecting the game somehow. And you always want to cleanse those because it takes away one of the killer's perks when you do that. The rule is if it glows, it goes. Okay, so one of the generators is done. Looks like Claudette is running from the killer right now. Oh no, he's found me. So that's called a pallet stun, what I just did. And this is called looping. And looping, this is like not an, an incredibly safe loop. Like I'm gonna have to vault right here. Oh, he reversed direction. I wasn't expecting that. He missed, he missed an M1. You normally will not get this much. You normally will not get this much mileage out of one loop. <laughs> but okay, see. You want to keep you want to watch the killer's red stain. He is missing a lot of attacks. And you want to react based on that. So like You get it. You get what I'm doing. He's still after me. Right now he's getting something called Bloodlust. If a killer is in a uh, chase for a very long time, they get an effect called Bloodlust. And it makes them faster. He's finally kicking it. You can't be serious. Okay. Now he's probably got Bloodlust 3, which means he's gonna catch up pretty quickly. But uh, I'll see. Okay, well, I don't know why you would... Okay, this window's blocked. Oh, that sucks. And there's no breakable wall here. We're gonna take this window. He's gotta break this. He's gotta break this wall or vault this window. He's gonna choose to vault the window. Did he give up? I think he gave up. Okay, I didn't really get too much into looping there. Oh, breaking the pallet removes bloodlust. I didn't know that. See, I'm learning things in the tutorial. Uh, right now he's chasing uh, Jake. So, you know what? I think we got this. I don't think I really need to do much of anything. Oh my god. Let me show you. Uh, this is a. If you don't know how to loop, the Killer Shack is a great one to start with. Because the Killer Shack, the Killer Shack is a very strong loop uh, if you're just starting as Survivor. Oh wow, he vaulted that. So you see how I'm running him right now? This is the correct way to run the killer. You wanna run him this way because remember what I talked about like vaults earlier? You wanna do this so you can take a fast vault out this window. Cause if you, if you loop him the other way, you're gonna have to take a medium vault and that won't be as fast. What I just did was called uh, pallet camping by the way. <laughs> You don't want to do that. Okay, here's another one that you want to do. This is the L wall, T wall loop. I would say it's very important to learn this one. Again, you want to keep track of the red stain. And like, if he fakes it, he won't fake it though. Then you'll be able to react. But if you know how to run this loop properly, you can keep the killer here for like forever. Now, if you vault, it's very important to note, if you vault, see that, see that entity blockage right there? That's the entity just blocked that window because I vaulted. Ooh, I got hit. I just vaulted it three times in one chase. So if you vault a window three times in one chase, um, the entity is gonna come along and he's gonna block it. So as you can see, I'm actually, okay, he gave up on me. But the reason you don't wanna loop this way on the killer shack is because say he's right behind me when you when you come to vault this window you're gonna automatically do a medium vault see how slow that is now compare that with this 
It's much smoother. This is why you want to loop him this way on the killer shack. Fast vault. So if you're playing killer, you want to try to force the survivor to loop you this way. So that they have to take a, a bad vault here. And if you're playing survivor, you're going to want to try to move this way. If this is hard stuff to remember, like, in the middle of everything. Uh, in the middle of playing, like, definitely. Oh, the hatch is going to open. See, I'm the, I'm the only one left, so it opens. And, uh, yeah. The, but, yeah, like I said, this L wall, T wall, it's called the L wall, T wall because this wall is like an L. And this one's like a T. And, uh, that's a great place to, uh... That's a great place to practice, like, watching the killer's red stain and, like, uh, vaulting a wind, like, vault window, uh, timing and things like that. Wow. Uh, that was a bot match. All right. I cannot believe that I did not have the most points. How did Jake get 17,000 points? He almost got 18,000 points. How? Okay. So that was survive with bots. I talked a little bit about looping. Um... But yeah, like I said, if you're just starting out with Survivor, the Killer Shack and the L wall, T wall tile are perfect places to practice. Um, and if you like, they're almost on every map too, Killer Shack and L wall, T wall. Uh, they're both very strong loops and you don't have to learn every single tile or like how every single loop works in order to, uh, in order to do well. So you can just start with those. That's a great place to start. All right. So I'm playing Killer now. Um... We're gonna look for survivors. I'm gonna break this breakable wall. You don't wanna break every breakable wall as killer, but um Oh. Ha. Oh no oh no. Okay, so here's a good here's a good example of something that you can do in like your macro game. So like I hit that Meg, right? But then I knew that Jake was right here. And I knew that Jake was in a corner, so I gave up the chase with Meg. You do not want to do this as Survivor, by the way. You don't want to play these at all. It's a trap. You will die. <laughs> uh, so I gave up on the chase with Meg because I knew that Jake was going to be an easy down because he ran straight into the corner and there was nothing there. All right, so we're going to get Jake here. We got lucky he didn't pallet stun us. Now, if you're Trapper, um, one thing that you can do with your traps is uh, you can set them in front of windows. Usually, if you don't know what to do with your traps, that's a good place to put them. Wow, they are failing a lot of skill checks. That's incredible. Dwight, what are you doing, bud? Okay. I need you guys to, like, take me to a loop, please, so I can talk about how to counter loops as killer. Okay, I'm gonna try to push him to one. Okay. Let's try a loop. Okay, he's just gonna throw down the pallet. You don't wanna throw down the pallet as survivor unless you have to. Trapper's very strong, by the way, at killer shack. You just like literally just put a trap down and then they'll get caught by it. Are you gonna loop or uh, okay, Dwight is just holding W. Actually. Okay. You just I'm just following scratch marks right now. I don't know why he was teabagging. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I'm not sure if there's any knowledge that I can really impart from this, sadly. Cause they're not really Like the way that the trapper was playing was um, pretty standard. See that Claudette moved over here. Like, I don't know what the deal. Never do this as Survivor. Never run into a dead zone like this. You will just go down in record time like that Claudette did. You always want to try to play a loop. Okay, so this is a situation. I normally don't like kicking gens, but this is a situation where you probably want to kick the gen. Because they're just going to come back for the unhook on Claudette and start working on that gen immediately. Might as well just put this here. Okay. They are failing a lot of skill checks. So, like, anytime you fast vault, 
Anytime it's Dwight. No way. Wait. Did I just miss him? Okay, we'll go after Jake. Whatever. One thing that you want to try to do is trappers. You want to try like force people into your traps. So like right here. I know that Jake is there. Or that Jake uh, is probably going to run into that unless he takes the window. So I just pushed him into it. And uh, you can just... Wow. These survivors. What the hell is happening, dude? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Dwight, please try to loot me. Okay. You can get easy hits at windows. All right. You want to listen for fast vaults. And uh, Dwight, please like... Again, again, I'm gonna emphasize this. Do not try to play these as survivor. Do not. See, he tried to take a medium vault and I got an easy hit at the window. That's why you don't want to take medium vaults if you can help it. Because it's just an easy way to get hit as you're trying to go through. Okay. And Jake died on hook. I cannot believe that. Wow. Here's Meg. Meg, please do something. Don't don't play that pallet. Okay. Well. Pff, I'm not able to teach you guys anything on this. Wow. I Okay. Let's pretend let's pretend like we're chasing a survivor, okay? Which by the way, if you're playing survivor on this tile, you want to run it this way and not this way. The reason that you want to do that is see this window right here? You want to set up for the fast vault on the window. So like, let's say I'm playing survivor. I want to run through the pallet over and over again. And then when the killer is getting close to me, I throw the pallet down and then I fast vault through this window and I'm out. That's what you want to do. Or you can just take the window if you want to save the pallet. You can save the pallet and um, and just take the fast vault through the window. If like the killer's doing some weird shit, like they're they're trying to like I don't know moonwalk or something. Which by the way, this is moonwalking, moving like this because in front of you is the red stain. Meg, okay, I'm gonna walk away so that Dwight unhooks Meg. In front of you is the red stain. You don't see it when you're playing killer. But as as survivor, you saw that um, Dwight was really scared to unhook that Meg. Uh, there's a there's a big red stain in front of you. So like, okay, here, L wall, T wall, perfect, perfect example. So like, let's say you're playing as a survivor and they're vaulting this window and they're vaulting that window. What you don't want to do as killers, you don't want to like go around the outside. Because if you do that, they will literally just keep vaulting the windows over and over again. What you want to do is you want to try to cut in between. And you want to try to play some mind games. So like for example, let's say a survivor like vaulted this as I was coming around, right? And as I come around this way, I see them disappear on the corner. What I want to do is I want to hide my red stain like this by what's called moonwalking. And then when I get to like here, that's why I turn around and that way if they're watching your red stain, they'll hopefully be like right here and you can get an easy hit. Another thing that you can do is like, let's say they just vaulted this window. You can like come here and like, let's say you see them turn around the corner. Now you've got two options. You can either like commit and try to get a hit at the window, right? Which, uh, on, depending on the distance, may be unlikely. Uh, you can decide to moonwalk this by turning around and then going for the lunge at the window, right? And that, that might slow them down because, if again, if they're looking for your red stain, it's not going to be there when you're right here. Or you can do um, something that I like to do, which is show your red stain at the corner. The survivor will... If, unless they're really good, they'll like instinctually take the like go for the commit to the window 
And then that's when you back up. And uh, I didn't do it very well there, but uh, you get the idea. That's when you back up and you get a hit as they're vaulting the window. So there's a lot of different ways to play this as killer and, and do different mind games. Of course, if you're Trapper, you can just shut it down immediately by putting a trap at one of the windows. Cause like they, if there's, if they're smart, they will just leave the loop if after that. Cause they, they basically, they can't use like the main thing that the loop's being used for. So that's just, that's just like, I wish I could show you an example. Oh my God, these survivors. See, never do this as survivor. You always want to play, you always want to run from tile to tile. You never want to run out into the middle of nowhere like this. Okay, she pre-dropped the pallet. Nothing much you can do against that. I tried to like show like a little tricky moonwalk. She's gonna pre-drop this. There's a there's a couple things about pallets too. So not all pallets are created equal. So this, for example, is a very safe pallet. And by that I mean if the pallet is down, unless you unless they're really stupid, you're not gonna be able to mind game them into a hit. So you might as well just break that one. But there are plenty of what I would call unsafe pallets. I don't know what, see, I don't know what, I don't know what she's doing. She, it's, she is not very predictable because she's an AI. Okay. <laughs> and unsafe pallets, you don't necessarily want to break. So for example, this right here, this very unsafe pallet. If a survivor throws this down, you don't necessarily want to break it. Because if this is down, it's an obstacle for them and you have very little move movement required to like get a hit at something like this. They they can't even loop you here when the pallet's down. So you, it, they basically it basically turns into just like a free hit area. So most of the time, again with exceptions, you don't want to break the pallet here. I'll see if I can I'll see if I can get one of the survivors to run over there and throw the pallet down so I can show you what I mean. But uh, unfortunately these survivors do not loop. I've noticed. Okay, let's see if we can Again, I just can't emphasize enough. Do not do what this Meg is doing. She's running out like away. You want to cling to walls. You do not want to play like this. Okay, Meg. I'm gonna see if I can direct her to this pallet over here. Okay. No, no, no. No. Okay, she won't do it. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Oh, tunneling and camping. Okay, so. I'll show you camping. That's an easy one to show. Now, this, this Meg is dead hook. All these, uh, the reason I know all these survivors are dead hook is because look at my hook counter. I've got nine out of 12. Every survivor can be hooked three times. So there's three survivors left. So they're all, they all will die instantly on the hook. But let's say that she didn't. This is camping. Specifically, this is face camping. Like if Meg was still alive and she was awaiting an unhook and I just stood here, that would be uh, face camping, right? Now, uh, camping, let's say she was on the hook there, but I was just like doing this shit. This is also camping. It's basically just like setting up a tent and being like, I ain't fucking leaving. Here's the hatch. I'm gonna just do something, I'm gonna do something funny. Put a trap by the hatch. Anyway, tunneling is uh, basically trying to back to back to back hook someone to get them out of the game as soon as possible only focusing on one survivor think of it as having tunnel vision so like that claudette earlier like let's say let's say that she was just hooked tunneling would be like if i if she was just unhooked and then i was like guess what you're dead i'm still going after you that would be tunneling the claudette she did like they do not they do not stay at the same loops it's annoying so I don't, you can play windows like this. Very unsafe windows. Just don't commit to it. One of the one of the best things that you can do as killer is just wait. Just wait around. 
like wait for them to to fuck up and make themselves really vulnerable. Yeah, so I'm gonna close the hatch right now. So one only one of the survivors remains, right? So that means that the hatch is about to open as soon as that music ends, and you saw the hatch open just now. So as killer, if you close it, you can close it. Um, the end game collapse begins, and that's the bar at the top of the screen. So once you close the hatch, or when all five gens are done, that means that uh, the game is well, it's it's going to end. So this timer begins counting down, and then the survivor's only chance to escape is to oh he might get out, is to go in the exit gates like this. Oh he left it. So see, he has it about like two thirds. And now he is, uh, he is just running. Now I have until the end game collapse timer reduces to zero to catch this guy and kill him. Or he'll just die anyway if he doesn't escape. Are you trying to flashlight me, AI Dwight? What a weirdo. Excuse you. Look at him. So this is a safe pallet, for example. You wanna you wanna kick that. All right, Dwight. What are you? Is he trying to get a blind? Can you? He did get a blind. I tried to let him get a blind, but okay. So go to this one. Go to this one. Throw this. Okay, unsafe pallet right here. So he throws it, and as you can see, like he's he's fucked. This is why you don't want to break these. Because you can just get an easy hit like that. So you don't want to break unsafe pallets like that. You want to leave them open for survivors to do dumb shit like that. And you can get a hit. Or a down. Okay. Sorry. That took... I was just trying to... I thought that they would actually try to loop me, but they didn't, sadly. But you get the idea, like, uh, kind of, like, I would recommend practicing Killer Shack for Killer or Survivor just starting out, because then you can, um, you can learn a lot of, like, really basic concepts. Okay. I do want to go over just a couple of little things, so I'm going to survive with bots one more time, but I'll, I'll probably just leave it after I'm done talking. And then we'll go back to regular, regular matches. Um... But hopefully for anyone out there that like watches Dead by Daylight and is like, I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm watching. Hopefully this helps. If you have um, more questions about like specific perks and things like that, we have an FAQ that um, goes into it. Okay, let's, let's find the killer. I'm BMing him so hard. Toxic. So let me show you one thing that you don't want to do as a survivor. You do not want to you do not want to try to loop the killer around a hooked survivor like this. This is a no-no that I'm doing. Also, this is a no-no. Doing this, bad thing to do. The reason you don't want to do that is because I'm basically allowing the killer to snowball when I do that. See, look, he's got two downs now. We're in a bad, bad situation. So don't be so desperate for the unhook that you do what I just did. Because, like, he's hooking her again. He's tunneling her. You saw what are you guys doing? It's so weird. Oh, no. Oh, see, like, the game is out of hand now, and it's all, it's literally all my fault. Because I was an idiot. And now, like, because I was overly altruistic. What I should have done, when you get in a chase with a killer and someone's on hook, you try to take them away from the hook. You do not try to, you do not try to be the hero and go for an unhook in the middle of a save unless, like, it's really, really desperate, the situation. So, okay, we'll go over uh, Killer Shack again. I don't know what this Claudette's going to do. She's fucked. Now, this this pallet right here, you know how I said not all pallets are created equal? 
Well, this palette is very, very strong. You may hear me call it God palette sometimes, and uh, Claudette just used it. <laughs> what I was gonna say is, you wanna try to make sure that you, uh, I'm going the wrong way right now, see? I mean, I got away with it. I got away with it, and now I'm going the right way. Oh no, I, I was going the right way, I think. See? Fast fault. And now the entity has blocked it. Normally, when this happens, you wanna leave the loop. You do not wanna stay. Once the entity blocks the the window, he left it. Um, because then you lose a major piece when you're trying to loop. Like you basically have no use for it anymore. Okay, I'm gonna try to do more stupid things that you shouldn't do. Okay. Um, let me see. Wow, he's in a chase with uh, two of them right now. They're gonna, th they're just, they just throw down that pallet. Look, he, he doesn't like it. I'm trying to get him to follow me. Okay. So one thing that you can do to force a fast fall. That wasn't a great, that was not a great scenario, but uh, hopefully you understood. You can like go a little bit out. And, uh, and then go straight for the window to force a, a fast vault instead of a medium vault. So remember how I was talking earlier about like, this is the, like the wrong way to do it. Um, go around this loop. That's only if there's a window there. If there's not, and it's just this variation where there's an open thing, you wanna go this way. The reason that you wanna go this way is so that you can get this on the fast vault. So this this tile is a lot like the other one, except there's a, a di you want to do it the opposite way. This guy is vaulting the windows a lot. Kind of annoying. He's still after me though. Now see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna get hit here because that was not the proper transition. I basically went from a loop, a tile that I could exploit into nothing. There's nothing you don't want to do. Bring the chase to someone working on a gen. You don't want to do that either. I'll finish it up for her though. I'll be nice. So see this one? Okay. See, there's no window on this one. There's no long wall. So this is a tile that you want to run this way. Because if it's not, if the window's not there, it's here. Oh. Now that was my fault because uh, I knew that he was nearby, but I didn't, uh, I didn't give space to react to the red stain. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. But yeah, hopefully you get the idea. I just wanted to put a few like don'ts in there. One thing like that I see a lot of new survivors do is they loop around someone on the hook and then they basically like lose the game for the entire team. Cause either they go down at the hook. What is this? They either go down at the hook or um, they don't unhook and the person on the hook goes to struggle state and that can be really bad.